Good evening. We will call the January 12th Kettlebell Hills Board of Commissioners meeting to order. If you would please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you would also join us, please, for a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, first up on our agenda this evening is the agenda approval. So moved. I'll second that. Any comments or discussion? All those in... We'll wait till. Sorry, I had to get That's okay. <clears throat> Just didn't want to vote without you. <laughs> all those in favor, please. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. <coughs> uh, we'll move on then to the first time that's set aside this evening for public comment. Um, there's two two opportunities for public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone who wishes to address the board on any topic to bring it forward. Um, we do ask if you're speaking as an individual to limit your comments to three minutes. If you're speaking on behalf of a group, just identify the group and you're welcome to um, keep those comments to five minutes. We had a sign-up sheet. We'll go in order of the sign-up sheet for those who signed up to speak. Um, but if you didn't <coughs> sign up, it's not too late. After those who signed up speak, then we'll call <coughs> from the floor. So welcome, Jerry. Thank you so much. I'm Jerry Fralick. I live at 414 Wallace Street in Kill Devil Hills. And I'm standing here at the moment uh, to recognize uh, the democratic process in fact works. Uh, I've come several times. Uh, last November, I asked for you to consider uh, what, uh, beach, if there should be any regulations on beach driving. The other towns all have some sort of, of, of uh, permit or otherwise. And, uh, and I knew that you would look into it. You've done that. And I appreciate it so much for taking your time, and thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Thanks. Jerry. Thanks. Okay. Um, next, Jack McCombs. Welcome. <coughs> Jack McCombs. I live at 917 Cedar Drive, KDH, of course. Uh, I'm representing the Silver Riders. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that I also am representing the great majority of cyclists, particularly road cyclists in the Outer Banks. I want to talk a little bit about the comprehensive transportation plan for Dare County, and I sent a report in to you folks. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you didn't find it boring. Uh, right off the bat, I want to say I really hope that you endorse this effort. It's a magnificent piece of work. It took a lot of people a long time to put this thing together. It's well done. So I really do hope you support it. Uh, my comments are only offered to strengthen it from the perspective of an experienced road cyclist. Okay, so it's not so much criticism, but an offer to make this the uh, report even better. Uh, before I start, I want to make it clear to everyone that all bicycle riders are not the same. You have children riding bicycles, you have teenagers riding bicycles, you have three-wheelers, you have people that ride on the sidewalks or ride on the uneven terrain on mountain bikes. What I'm going to talk about is the cyclists that use the roads as we are entitled to by law. Incidentally, that law that treats cyclists as vehicles whereby they have to they have the same rights plus the same responsibilities as drivers of motor vehicles applies to every state in the union and every country in Europe so we are not unique in North Carolina in that respect respect uh, just as an aside Frequently, when I and other road bikers are pedaling along in Dare County, it's not uncommon for people to roll down their windows and scream at us to get off the roads. 
and to get on to the bike path. And I just like to tell these people there's only one bike path in the whole of the Outer Banks, and it runs from Pirates Cove to the Midway intersection. All other paths are multi use paths, and that means it's being used by all users walkers, people with children, slow cyclists, people on scooters. And if you take road bikers and put them on that multi use path, it creates a very dangerous situation for other users as well as the road uh, biker himself. So wh what I'm talking about is road bikers using the, law the roads lawfully. And one of the things I tried to impress upon my fellow cyclists, not only do we have a right to the road, we have the same responsibility as do motor vehicle drivers. And that means we're not supposed to run traffic lights. We're not supposed to hog the road. Uh, we, uh, where's the police here? We do rolling stops at stop signs, which is a lawful procedure in some states. It is not in North Carolina, though. What that means is we slow down at stop signs, and then when we, after looking both ways, we proceed to the stop sign without stopping. <coughs> uh, generally, uh, I have details. Uh, uh, suggestions for improving the body of the work, and I detailed them in the report that I sent to you. But the, the major thrust of my comments was safety has to be better woven into the report than it is already. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that are really unique to the Outer Banks is that we have over 3,000 foreign students come here to work from uh, the springtime into the late fall. And these uh, young adults come over here from other countries. They don't understand our traffic laws. And moreover, the culture that they come from, quite often, bicycling is one of the primary modes of transportation. And thus, people, motorists, treat the cyclist as if they do indeed have a right to that road. They come over to this culture, and it's very much different. When I read uh, the comprehensive uh, report, I came to the conclusion halfway through, they were talking about a comp comprehensive transportation plan for facilities. It is not a comprehensive transportation plan in, in the sense that ed education of all drivers it is, is addressed. And I really believe there should be some words in the report about education. That is education to the motorists about their responsibility to people that are in other modes of transportation, for example, the bicycle or pedestrians along the roadway. Education as far as the cyclists understand their responsibilities <clears throat> and, under, and education about what a modal mode transportation system is about. Speaking of multi-mode transportation, I doubt very much that most of our citizens really understand what that means. So I really recommend that a definition of multimodal transportation be included in the summary. And then a new appendix be developed that details an ex exact uh, example of a roadway that has been converted to modal, modal, modal transportation. And we have the ideal opportunity here with US 158 from Kitty Hawk down to Nags Head. In about the 60 miles of 168, 158 from the state line down to the junction of 64, there's two things that stand out. The KDH, Kitty Hawk, and Nags Head segment of that is the most heavily populated from the state line to the junction of 64. The most uh, heavily pop populated in terms of the number of people and the number of businesses. It is also the only segment on that highway that the speed limit in a populated area does not drop from 50 to 45. And I find that amazing. And I've been here 18 years and I still find it amazing. 
the 158 segment through the three towns is dangerous, <coughs> just as dangerous for motorists as it is for cyclists and for pedestrians that are trying to get across them. <coughs> I don't know. I'm sure the, the statistics are available. How many motor vehicle accidents have been on that? I think it'd be worth while to publicize that. <coughs> it's interesting that probably we have 100 cyclists using the roads of Dare County on a near daily basis and another hundred that use it infrequently. None of us will ride on 158. If we, those that, of us that live in this community, we know better than to ride on the 158. But that knowledge is not shared by the foreign students nor the tourists that come here. So sometimes you will see people out on that road and it really scares the dickens out of me when we see them out there. 158, the turn lane, and this is widely recognized. That's no longer a turn lane. That's a de facto merge lane. And quite often, I don't know how many accidents that have been caused on that. I've read about a number of them over the years where a guy's gone out, got into that quote unquote merge lane, is watching his rear view mirror so he can move into the traffic and he doesn't see a park, another car coming towards him that's trying to turn. The speed is too fast, 50 miles an hour is too fast in this area. And the enforcement of the speed limit, unfortunately, is not a priority of any of the police departments, the sheriff's department or the state police. All of us are driving on that 158 nearly every day, and you know as well as I do, that people are constantly exceeding the speed limit. If we wait until money is available for modernizing 158, we're probably going to wait for a lot of years because it's going to be a considerable investment. However, I believe there are things that we should and uh, we could and should do as soon as possible to make that a much safer highway than it is. And it doesn't take that much money. First of all, reduce the speed to 45 mile an hour. And as I, as I said in my report, I am not naive. I understand there's going to be howls of outrage. But I also looked to elected leaders in the various towns and at the county level to lead. There's a lot of mistake, a lot of examples in this country where citizens did not want to do something. But the leaders saw the wisdom of doing it, and they became politicians, and through that, convinced people to change. This is an opportunity for you and your fellow <clears throat> elected officials in the Outer Banks to do the same. Prohibit left turns from 158, except at traffic light intersections. Prohibit left turns onto 158 from the side street, except at traffic light intersections. Uh, not long ago, I was curious about how long it would take me to drive from the foot of the Wright Memorial Bridge to the junction of one, uh, 64. So I did it and I timed myself. I did it twice at 45 and 50. It was less than two minutes difference. And I did both times coming back to the other way. Each time was less than two minutes. Now, I'm sure most citizens are not going to take my word for it, but as I uh, suggested in the uh, report I sent to you, I think it'd be worthwhile for the police department, not driving police cars, obviously, to go ahead and time it various times of the year and various times of the day and see what the difference is. Because I think one of the objections is it's going to take, take us too long to get from A to B when it, the amount of time is negligible. And if we were to reduce the, reduce, uh, reduce the speed limit, it would make that highway a lot base, uh, safer than it is right now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jack. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, next we have Richard Bear. Welcome. Hi. 
Mayor, commissioners, attorneys, um, manager, public, good, good afternoon, evening. I'm Richard Bayer. I live on Bay Drive. I'm here to speak briefly about the uh, proposed, um, I guess, public hearing on 153.082, the last, the last item on your uh, agenda. Uh, not knowing if the board is going to discuss this so much, or are you just setting the, are you just getting ready to set a public hearing so we can talk about it? I'm not always available for all of the meetings, though I have more time now than I used to. I, I think that the uh, opportunity to open the discussion on allowing fences on unimproved property is, is an opportunity right now. I recently went in to get a permit to put a fence on my property and was told, well, your two lots next to your house are not tied to your house, as in one parcel. I said, no, I separated them for tax purposes. I said, they're investment lots, but I own them. That's all my property. And he said, well, you have, you're not allowed to put a fence on a property unless you have a house. There's a reason the, the town has these, but I think allowing a fence on an unimproved property, even though this one <laughs> happens to be next to me, I have vacant lots in other places. I would like to be able to, to put a fence on them of some nature to define where my line is and where my neighbor's is. You know the old, the old adage, a good, a good fences make good neighbors. They do, because then there's no argument. You have a, a buried iron, po iron pole underneath tons of vegetation and behind trees and bushes. It's really hard for someone to get a visual on it, and then they park their car on your, or they started laying their lumber on your lot, and a fence is a good thing. So I hope that you all have an open mind on the idea of somehow tweaking this um, fence ordinance to allow fences of some nature to be built. I realize you can't just open, a, open it wild because you would have people abusing it, putting in privacy fences and doing all sorts of things behind the fence that you know, you'd have to have a periscope to look over to see what was going on. I'll leave that up to you to come up with the, the wording. But keep an open mind and see if we can put fences on properties. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Richard. Uh, next, Sue Kelly. Welcome, Sue. Hello, everyone. My name is Sue Kelly. I live at 211 Sea Village Lane. Uh, when I saw that you'd put something on here about beach driving, I just had to jump up and start um, expressing my opinion. Um, I would love to see uh, changes in our current beach driving. It's one of the things that has concerned me since the whole time, the 20-some years that I've owned property here in Kill Devil Hills. Um, last week was a good example of, I think, the problem. Um, a lot of people had been on the beach. They'd been riding all the way up to the dune line, all the way down as far as they could go before they ended up in the water. The ruts were probably 10 or 12 inches deep. Um, I can remember when my neighbor in her 80s, she was ambulatory, but she could not go to the beach anymore if anybody had been driving on it because she could not navigate her way over those ruts. Um, I think sometimes it's dangerous when people are sitting on the beach, when their children are playing on the beach and people are driving up and down the beach. Uh, I have not seen any really serious uh, almost accidents, but my neighbor has talked about several that she has seen. Um, I think one of the reasons you may be bringing this before up now is because once we get all that pricey sand on the beach, do we really want people's cars pushing it off into the ocean perhaps more quickly than it would otherwise go? And I think that's a real possibility. Um, one of the issues with this is that it's very hard to go backward. People have been riding their four-wheelers on this beach for a long time, and you can look at the Park Service's experience, experience to see how difficult it can be to make somebody be willing to go backwards. Um, I, I think perhaps you might want to have, I would hope you would consider a public hearing on this. Um, and one other thing to keep in mind is that things have really changed. Uh, the beach is much more narrow than it was years ago, and a whole lot more people have four-wheel drive than used to. So I think that's made a big difference in the impact of driving on our beach, and I hope you will seriously consider trying to uh, perhaps end or change that policy. 
And I'll say one other thing on behalf of my friend Chris Merrick, who hopes that when you take up the issue of people's umbrellas and chairs and stuff that get left on the beach, that you will give people like him who rent that stuff time enough to get it back before you collect it. Thank you very much, and good luck to you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sue. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak at this public comment time? Anyone? Okay. Well, thank you. We will <clears throat> close public comment and remove to response to public comment. Um, so Jerry and Sue, thanks for speaking. Obviously, we'll be discussing this in just a few minutes. So thank you. Um, uh, Jack, and you know, I, I appreciate your support of the CTP, and we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Um, but I, I wanted to share with you, as far as the speed limit, um, this board, goodness, two years ago? Was that when, Debbie, was it two years ago? We actually made, um, we contacted NCDOT, and we requested them to look at the speed limit and to lower the speed limit. Um, we were looking at um, townwide at the same time nags had also um, contacted them and that's when they agreed to lower it to 45 it's it's lower now does it start at tanya street is that where it starts it it's just right. yeah it's just around the monument all the way to nags head elementary school so it does span into nags head and that was a direct result of of the request that we made because we agree with you um, that it needed to be lowered. They did look and, and did not authorize. We requested Townwise. They, they did not authorize. They chose the start, start and, and basically endpoint. Well, I guess Nags had had a little bit, you know, they had input on that. So I don't understand all the reasoning behind that. Um, there, you know, I think what was shared was just the, the traffic flow. They, they have looked at the studies and, uh, excuse me, the accidents and so on and so forth. And um, anyway, that's what they shared back with us. So we did make some progress, um, but it didn't it go like we wanted. <laughs> yeah, it didn't address it as, as completely as that. Um, as far as the recommendations, and I know we all received the, the copy, which spelled it out more. Um, you know, I don't know. We can discuss that in just a few minutes as far as what we're going to do with the CTP and how you want to look at those. But we'll take that up in just a few more minutes. So. Thank you. Any, anyone have anything else to? No, at this time. No. Yeah, I would like to say one or two things. I agree with you on the education, and uh, of course, there should be ongoing problems, or not problems, I'm sorry, programs to educate people on that. And I don't know, it's been a, I don't want to say many <coughs> years since I took driver's training. I don't know how much they emphasize that right now when they're in the driver's training for teenagers and high school kids, whether they obviously are told what the rules are, but I wonder if just how. Uh, emphatic they are about the importance of it, especially the way the times are changing. I don't, I could be very wrong, I don't suspect <coughs> there's a whole lot of attention given to it. But there should because as far as, as you've explained, they're just another vehicle on the road. Has the same rights and responsibilities as everybody else, so they should know. As far, that's what I mean about the education. And I know I've heard people say, people like you and others, well, about 158, well just stay off of it. Well, that's hardly fair, you know, because you pay your taxes like everybody else and you have a right to do that. And we've gone over that a number of times. You have the right to ride the bike there. So that's really not a very nice thing to say. And it, it certainly <coughs> people with common sense do stay off it now, as you said, because they know better. But that's not an argument for it. Um, and one last thing is in Currituck, between here and Chesapeake, uh, I believe there's three areas where the speed limit drops from 45 and then 35 uh, between there and uh, Kitty Hawk. And uh, I don't know, uh, of course, I don't live up there. I don't know if there's any kind of complaints about that or not. I, I suspect not. People are used to it. That's what it is. And I believe if we did that here at 45, that would be the same thing here. Even after a very short period of time, people would be, well, the speed limit's 45, so that's what we're going to do. So uh, I wish the state had, like the mayor said, wish they had gone with 45 all the way, but uh, I don't see any problem with asking them again at some point. So, thanks for your input. Appreciate it. Jack, could I be permitted to respond to 
Um, actually, need to wait until just the next public comment. But please, sorry. Um, what's that? Oh, and then did Richard leave? Oh, no, you're there. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we'll briefly talk about that later. Um, but that's exactly why it's on our agenda. <laughs> and you're not the only one that's um, made that request recently. So thank you. Okay, let's move on then to um, old business. We have one item under old business, and that's an action update to the Dare County Comprehens Comprehensive Transportation Plan, including multimodal highway maps. Um, at the December board meeting, we received a presentation from Carrie Morrow from the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Um, and um, we needed to provide an opportunity since that meeting before this meeting, before taking action, to give the public an opportunity to provide more input from us. Um, the town staff did a great job trying to, you know, get it out there that we wanted to receive responses. It's been on our homepage of our website. Um, and I believe to date Jack is still the only person that provided, oh, we had one other, that's right, so two that provided, um, uh, that's right, um, Mark Cole that provided um, feedback. Um, the other one, we ha that's right, we had an email from Mark Cole who also pledged his support of the, the plan. So I'll open the board, uh, the floor for board discussion and comments. <clears throat> uh, fine with it. I think the only piece that um, I'm not a huge fan of is the potential for, and I forget the term that they used, um, was having the median go down the majority of the stretch of road. Uh, but I think that's so far off into the future with funding and, and, and space issues that I'm okay with the preliminary plan. So. Okay. Yeah, it's been off in the future for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There is no funding at no. attached to this plan. So. Not where we live. That's right. Um, as far as Jack's comments about wanting to see, or his recommendations about wanting to see additional education and safety components, as well as a definition of multi multimodal, um, would that be something we could adopt? the resolution supporting this plan, but send a note with that of would they please consider adding elements of that? Would you all be in favor of doing that? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, okay. Then, um, basically, we just need a motion to adopt the resolution as well as send a letter requesting consideration of adding education and safety components to the plan as well as a definition of multimodal. I will make a motion that we adopt the resolution for the comprehensive transportation plan for the town of Killable Hills and also to add the definition of multimodal transportation and education and, and, education and safety components and right. the definition. I'll second. Any further discussion, comments? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on under new business. Item number one, beach issues. The two issues that we will be discussing are beach driving and personal items left on the beach. Um, <clears throat> so as Jerry indicated, um, I know he's requested a number of times um, that we look at this, but we agreed at the November meeting that we would place this on our agenda. Um, a couple of the staff have provided some background support for what our neighboring towns do. Nags Head permits speech driving, but they require um, in their town code, they spell out definitions and they have a $25 dollar annual fee that has to be paid. The town of Kitty Hawk has prohibited beach driving um, completely. Those are what our most recent neighbors have. So open the floor for discussion and comments. It was an exception for commercial fishermen in Kitty Hawk, correct? Everywhere. I think exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and if commercial fishermen and the, t the town employees are driving on there, you're still going to have the ruts. Right. Well, and, and all towns allow even, even though they're like Town of Kitty, I mean, government related and service vehicles, your ocean rescue, your four wheelers for their, you know, your trucks that are carrying um, ocean safety related equipment, they're all 
permitted or allowed. No offense. So. <laughs> I mean, if it's yes, soft sand, point. you can't help yeah. it. <laughs> so would we also classify the recreational fishermen as commercial because they are still, you know, involved in the commercial aspect of buying a fishing permit and, you know, bait and rods and reels and all that goes within, you know, the tackle shop? You know, is that something that we would allow as well or? That's something by definition, according to the state marine fisheries, is totally different. And the commercial license people have to have a Absolutely. separate thing. Uh, license for that kind of thing, and they have to meet certain criteria. And I don't think recreational fishermen need that. Okay. What are their comments? So, um, well, I mean, right now we currently allow uh, beach driving in the off season, which is obviously right. for safety <laughs> concerns because that's when the fewest people are on the beach. Um, I mean, by nature, Trucks and vehicles on the beach are going to create some ruts. I mean, and even if you have guidelines, I don't, I don't believe Nags Head requires you to go back and fill in ruts that you're going to create driving down the beach. So um, I'm not sure what we necessarily do if that's the largest complaint. I'm just trying to figure out what we would actually right. be changing. You well, and we will still, whether we change or not we're still going to have ruts because you're still going to have some vehicles on the beach mm -hmm. um granted right now we don't have any regulations whatsoever so um <clears throat> you've got kitty hawk that's the most restrictive you have nag said that's moderate and you have us that's none basically other than see you know the time of year well and i think kitty hawk is <clears throat> for obvious reasons they don't have a whole lot of beach to drive on so yeah. I mean, you'd be driving under people's houses in, in some <laughs> cases. Um, do we have what the guidelines are? Is there anything that's in Nags Head that really prohibits any of the activities that we've received complaints on or would potentially change people's behavior? I think the main, the main issue in Nags Head is that it does require the permit. Okay, but I mean, so we collect $25 and we'll give them a sticker, but it doesn't necessarily potentially change anything. Well, right. yeah. I think it would prevent some uh, joy riders just riding around having a good time. They might have a little <coughs> bit more responsibility. If someone is serious about driving on the beach, they're probably going to be serious about, you know, not causing a problem because, you know, they had to pay the money to get it. You know, I, I, I might be willing to consider a permit, uh, you know, because it might help with the like I said the joy riders or you know someone that's not really careful you know, probably the younger crowd it eliminates that spur of the moment right. oh let me go be wild and crazy that yeah. that's what that could I mean it, and I, I would agree that it could cut down on some of the traffic because of you have to plan and go get a permit right. <clears throat> there there is a penalty in Nags Head if you are caught driving on the beach without the permit and, and um, Greg, did you tell me that was 95? The last time I pulled up at 8th Street, there was a sign there that said, mm -hmm. permit required, penalty $95. Now, I don't know yeah. if it's changed, but <laughs> I, I haven't pulled up there this year. It's so. an odd number. <clears throat> but, uh, that's what I remember. I didn't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good boy. <laughs> okay. I mean, my... I'll tell you my personal, I mean, my, my opinion um, on this. Since we have been, since we have not had any restrictions in place, I hate to go straight to no beach driving. I, mean, um, I, I think I would like to see us in recognition of, of some of the requests from our citizens. Um, I would like to go in the direction of recommending that we do something similar to what NAGSET has done and establish a permit. At least that also gives an additional opportunity for education when people come in to get the permit. You know, we can have a list of do's and don'ts, you know, what's what's the appropriate way to drive in the beach and what's not. Um, and then it gives some teeth if we have people acting inappropriately. It gives, again, a little bit of teeth of what do we do with them. You know, now we have a way to check, do you have a permit? And if you don't, well, you know, you could be fined then, which we should do if, if we're going into the permitting arena. 
Um, or if they do have a permit and they're acting, I mean, we could always add on our thing, we're going to issue a permit, but if you're caught driving erratically or, or inappropriately, that we can always revoke that mm -hmm. permit as well. So that that's what I lean towards maybe wanting to do. This might be a, a, a question for our law enforcement. <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty sure that on, at least in the, the national uh, areas, the federal areas of the beach, that traffic laws apply. 25 miles an hour, you have to have your seat belts. You can't have people sitting on the edges of pickup truck beds and that type of thing. Is that the same thing on our beach now? Or do we not have any restrictions? You have to make the ordinance. Okay, so that's not a standard. Okay. It's a PVA public beach area, which is not a highway. So different rules apply on our beach when it's able to drive on. Okay. I was not aware of that. That I would be in support of. Because, I mean, just the speed limits, I think, would help with some of the noise complaints that we've gotten and might help with the size of the ruts when you're playing with your truck. <laughs> No, I don't. I really don't have much to add. I mean, if there's people that are uh, behaving in a manner they shouldn't, the permit's not going to stop them. You know, if they go out there at midnight after having been someplace, you know, whether they're intoxicated or not, they go out there and <coughs> do donuts, which you've talked about before. Uh, in fact, they're going to need a permit. I don't think they'll pay any attention to that. So I don't believe it'll stop too much of that, if any. Um, but uh, if I was to get, want to drive on the beach and I said needed a permit, I wouldn't drive on the beach unless I got the permit. So that, and if I said oh, I'm not, I don't care about it that much, and I wouldn't get it, so that would keep at least one person off the beach. So yeah, that's yeah for some law-abiding citizen. So I know it's really. Uh, Although on the surface it doesn't seem like it, it's kind of a complex problem in a lot of ways. And Absolutely. one of the things that people point out all the time is, well, we're the only one that doesn't do something. Well, you know, other people say, well, that's what makes us unique. You know, so take your choice. Okay. I, I'm not opposed to going again. I, I, I tend to favor what you said. I, I'm. I could go for the the in between. I um I I would not be opposed to not doing anything either though. It I I could really go either way. I, I tend to think a little bit like Mike does though. Yeah, I think if you're if somebody's going to really go out there and and whoop it up, the, the the permit's not going to really make that much of a difference. I do think we might deter a few people um, by by having them have that permit, but um, I. I, I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope there is a, a significant difference if if we you know were to to do that and and it and that is the case. So I'd I'd like to I, I'm I'm all for trying things. So I I, I just um I don't know what kind of it, it it is it is really hard when you, when you've been the least restrictive. I, I think we might get a lot of backlash from this. So it, it'll be interesting to see what people think once we tell them. Oh, and by the way, you've always been able to do this, but now you've got to do this before you can do this. And this is the reason why. Would the consensus be then maybe to have staff look at the regulations in AgState and maybe perhaps other places and get a template for something we might look at in the future? Or? That sounds good to me. I mean, it's better to have it on the ready than you not have to go through all this in the middle of the summer or, you know, whenever. Well, I mean, it ends in April. Oh, right, yeah. In, yeah. In April, you can't drive so. And we can bring it up as an agenda item at some point, and we'll even act on it either way. Right. What do you think? So am I hearing, I mean, because what staff did do is bring back NAG's heads. Right. But are you asking them to bring back something different or to, I, I just want to be clear for what Debbie and the well, staff should do different I mean, than what they brought to us this time. Well, I mean, they could staff could look at it and say if there's anything they don't like about the Nagshead one, they could change it or modify it or whatever. But uh, I don't think it would hurt to look at one or two other places and see there might be some gem out there that we miss. You know. Right. What would be entailed to 
designate the beach as non-PVA? I think the chief indicated that that would require an ordinance. Just an ordinance saying and that I this think is. I it's restrictive as you guys want to, to make it hmm. as, as an ordinance, I think. We, unless you make an actual street or highway, you can't really take it as a PVA. But if you were to turn around, you can add to what PVA covers, like public area, what it is. Um, like reckless driving, we could charge somebody for that at that particular time, but for a speed limit, no. But if you were to put a city ordinance saying speed limit is such such, then we can charge them under a city ordinance. So you could put different ordinances with it and we could enforce that. Mm -hmm. along with what state does go on public good care, like drunk driving uh, and other items. Okay. So I think for to help make sure that we get back something that you feel like you could work with and evaluate, then maybe what we're doing is asking staff to modify, to, to find an existing template, modify it to include, mm -hmm. for example, a speed limit recommendation on the beach. Um, some of the other safety issues and, and we may need help with knowing what all those were but like you talked about you know what's appropriate as far as people hanging out i mean it gets a little catchy because if you've got your fishing gear and your people and you're driving from one spot to the next i mean i don't know what safety concerns other than speed but if you think of any then we should ask staff to look at those too well, to put I into mean, like the, well <clears throat> there's a, uh, a facebook page and a web page out there oregon and the idiots and you know, one of the things that they're promoting is beach driving safety. And one of the things about sitting on the sides of the pickup truck is you hit one of those ruts and now people go flying out. You can be in the back of a pickup truck, but you need to have your butt on the, del on the bed. Right. Um, so being able to transport people from one side to the other and, and gear to the other side, I mean, I, you know, I, if we're going to go towards a safety aspect, then that's the things that I would like to see. I don't want to see elimination, but I would like to see it be a little safer. Okay. Yeah. Second. Okay. okay. Yeah. So sounds, consensus. That's what we want. Yeah, sounds good. When do you want to revisit this? Do we want this at? I guess what's realistic is it real? Yeah, what's I mean, realistic? Well, the, the, <laughs> the February meeting is realistic because you know what we bring you. You may want to tweak. Then you may want to set a public hearing. I, I think your goal is if you are going to implement changes to have those ready for next fall when at the end of the when, summer season, when the, right. um, season so, comes. So we've 1st. got some time, but yeah. I think we just keep keep working on it. I mean, if you say October first is when it kicks in, September first maybe is when permits are available. So I mean, you know, we've got right. some time. But if, if, if you if going the permitting route is, is what you choose, or right. or you may just choose to um, strengthen your ordinance to. Um, focus more on the safety okay. yeah, you could do that without the permit right, right. Mm -hmm. try that without it and then you don't have any administrative pieces on it of course like you're saying that if they come in for the permit then there's yeah. an educational mm -hmm. piece that they have to read and then I know the National Park Service is having them actually sign that and, and that they've read it yeah whether or not that's truly that understood or not is different Okay. All right. So we've provided some direction, and we will have this again in February as an agenda item. Okay. We'll move on then, if that's all right with everyone, to item 1B, which is the proposed amendment to Chapter 130, General Offenses, Section 130.29, Beach Equipment. And this is to regulate personal property left on the beach overnight and unattended. Um, <clears throat> so we've discussed this now at a couple of meetings. At our November meeting, we asked staff to bring back... Um, um, basically an ordinance um, which they have made modifications um, <clears throat> to an ordinance that we adopted earlier in the year on beach equipment um, to address um, not only I guess it deals with the placement of these in the line of sight but also then things left overnight mm -hmm. So, um, open the floor for discussions, questions, if you have any questions of what staff have put together, or discussion. Uh, I th if I'm not mistaken, uh, NEGS had passed their ordinance, but they also said they weren't going to enforce it this coming year. Right. 
uh, I wouldn't be in favor of doing that because we don't like to make codes we're not going to enforce. So if we want to, uh, if there's consensus for doing something, and I think there is, I might suggest that we give it a whole season of the efforts that we gave it last year because they seem to show pretty good results. And that way, you know, so many of the repeat customers that are here every year, I don't know how many, what percentage, 70, 80 percent of the people are the ones that come back. By the end of next, this coming season, they'll know what the rules are, and then hopefully by 16, then they'll be able to uh, adhere to those rules. And at that point, we could, you know, enact this code and then enforce it at that point. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it in now and then just not ignore it, but I, if we put it in now, we've got to enforce it. And I don't think there was enough time last year. I, there was part of the earlier season that, that we, we weren't doing something. Mm -hmm. That you know, I think if we give it a whole season, um, staff have any ideas on this? Dave, are you, you all right with that? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I, think it, I think it makes sense to kind of have a warm-up year for it. Uh, the only question that was brought up, and I think Greg, no, it's noted in here, is people asked, why are you putting this on? Why are you putting this tag on my equipment? Um, and so maybe we can just have that clear in the language on the, that the town is moving toward this, this end, is looking at adopting something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I got you. Maybe, maybe we can adopt it to be, to be implemented starting this date. And I just don't see how that's different, though, than what NAGSAD's doing. What NAGSAD's doing. Yeah. I mean, my thought, though, is, is the way our ordinance reads, yeah. a couple of things are different than NAGSAD's. One is we don't have this set time to, to defi <clears throat> defined. <clears throat> we define overnight, but our, our tagging is going to occur in the morning. That's what um, Dave has indicated their staff are doing. The other thing that I think is an important thing is in E, when it talks about remedies, it says yada 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 yada, but and said property may be removed. So by and disposed, you know, it's going to be considered litter and it may be removed. So as I understand, you know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I see you guys tagging something morning one mm -hmm. that says it may be removed, and then morning two. If it's still out there, that's when it may be subject for taking it off. It, it that's and it, not not only that, we're also looking at uh, revisiting during the day if a tag is placed on equipment, if the people are in, inhabiting that area, having a word with them, just letting them know what what is afoot. The issue exists where uh, the tags are torn off, weather, et cetera. But at the same time, we don't have the infrastructure to remove anything. Um, if we it, yeah. if, if a windstorm yeah. comes through and, and uh, it, during the day when a lot of the stuff is out there, we're unsure whether anything is going to be removed at all. So it takes two days at minimum to even identify anything as litter. Mm -hmm. And then after that, and, and it, it really does tend to, to stack up on the, the people doing the, the garbage removal on the beach. And, and, and that was a question. As well, there's, I believe it's Corral and Duck both have They've already enacted this, and, and they just remove the things right away. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's it's, a, it's where it's up to you to give us a, a path to follow here. And it may be, you know, I, I'm of the mindset that if we adopt this, we have them ready to start tagging and, in, and enforcing this summer because they are going to do, as I think you guys do with, most everything on the beach that you do, you do a really good job communicating with, with people, <clears throat> whether it's trying to keep people safe and prevent um, you know, aquatic okay. situations or not. I feel like you'll handle this in the same professionalism. That being said, I could see us needing to have some conversation once you're, show, once you're sharing what you're identifying. You know, once we enact this, we're going to learn pretty quickly what are your challenges. You know, are you finding significant lack of compliance that then is creating a big burden on how do we get this litter off the, the beach? But I don't think we're going to know until we really put it in place and see what we're dealing with. Um, but I think, it, you know, if you've given people two opportunities because it's two mornings in a row and then you're trying to on that second morning they haven't removed it the tag's still there you knew it was there overnight then you're trying to mobilize to see how you're going to you know get rid of the litter i mean that's someone that's just 
obviously willfully not being compliant. And they're the ones that have really forced us to kind of have this ordinance, if that's the direction no, we go. That's right. <clears throat> and if we don't move forward with this and put something in place that that's in place now, then then you don't have anything to back you up. You're still just tagging and saying, "Okay, please do this for me." Right. Right. It's the intractability of the patron that doesn't see any weight behind what we're doing, and doesn't maybe want to give up their their place card on the beach. I mean, I hope we would put this in place, and you don't ever have to deal with it. It's just there, and nice. then, but yeah. at least if it is. We, we can, we can notify together. metal recyclers that they have free range on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. You know, they'll be going at lunchtime. Yeah. I'll be taking um, the trash cans. You know, I, I mean, it should be common sense not to leave stuff on the beach. You know, yeah. it's, it's... Can't rely on that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know when we originally asked for this to be created, I was of the mindset that if we're going to have staff work on it, then let's go ahead and do it. Let's not wait the year. Let's yeah. go ahead and do it. And I like the the property may be removed by the town uh, because that that does give some opportunity anyway. for some slackness in removal. Um, now Sue mentioned uh, you know rental property, but I would assume that if when you I've never rented umbrellas or chairs here, but you're responsible for those. So if it gets removed, then you, gotta pay for it. you get to pay for those. And I mean, it's kind of unfortunate, but I don't know how that necessarily works in their contract. But And I don't know if it's too much to ask you guys. I mean, you know, there's just a few companies that do it. You know, is it unrealistic if we're having an issue that we would be able to contact like an Ocean Atlantic Atlantic? Ocean uh, Atlantic true. Rentals and give them a heads up. You've got some non-compliant folks. I mean, we don't have to it's, destroy their stuff. Theirs we know. <laughs> yeah, right. goes yeah to I'm not saying it's destroy it, but yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not really an issue. It's, okay, it's, good. That situation <clears throat> where rental equipment is out there, we're I I'm pulling umbrellas out of the ocean and chairs out of the ocean all the time, and I just call them and say pick them up. Yeah, and it's, it's not. Really I would think they would come and get it. Yeah. Yeah. And that bright blue in the wood is pretty <laughs> identifiable. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Any other comments, questions, thoughts? Is it considered stealing if they leave the equipment there and then someone else goes pick pick it up? I'm just curious. I'm sorry, what's that? Is it considered stealing if, you know, you leave the stuff out and then say, I go get it? It's already, uh, if the equipment is left overnight on the beach oh. and it runs away, it grows legs <laughs> and runs away, it's going to be automatically assumed that I've done something with it anyway. So that's going to be the very first question. The town hall is going to get a a phone call or the lifeguard on duty is going to get somebody asking a question and I'm going to get involved. One of the reasons that I, I see that we're a good fit for this is we're, gonna, we're out there anyway. We're going to see it. Hopefully it'll get us a little bit more hand in glove with the people who are out there and they'll understand and I don't really see that this is going to be that rough a year for this. It's just giving us the maneuvering room with somebody's intractable to Persuade, convince. Yeah. And we'll need your feedback back if, if we do adopt this tonight, that it does indeed do that, or if you have recommendations Certainly. in your staff based on that. Certainly. <clears throat> okay, what's the pleasure of the board? All right. I like the amendment as it is. Yep. Motion would be in order to adopt it then, if you'd like to move forward with that. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we uh, take the proposed amendment, Chapter 130, uh, Section 130.29, Beach Equipment, and uh, go ahead and move forward with that. Approve it. I adopt it. Adopt. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion to adopt the proposed amendment and a second. All those in favor, please signal. Whoops, well, first, any other discussion? <laughs> <laughs> any other questions no. on that? Sorry. No. No. Good. Okay. I knew that. That's <laughs> right. I'm just joking. Okay. All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. We will move on then to new business item 2A. There's an appointment for uh, a position on the planning board. Mayor Proton, do you, are you prepared to? Yes. Uh, Oh, okay. I see. Um, Bless. 
Yeah, I would. Uh, we only had two applicants for that expressed a desire to be on the planning board, and uh, Skip Jones has has been uh, involved in doing stuff with the town. He started off on the uh, stakeholders uh, committee back when we were discussing the height. I guess it was five years ago, Meredith, or six or something like that back back then. And he also serves on one or two of the other committees. Um, and I spoke to him, and uh, he'd be very happy to serve, so I'd like to uh, uh, nominate Skip Jones to take the vacant position on the planning board. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. And uh, <coughs> the other position, um, oh, that's next. Well, um, the next item first is a recommended oh, okay, amendment right. yeah. um, to Chapter 31, Section 31.40, and that's to eliminate term limits for members of the Historic Landmarks Commission. Um, uh, currently, that commission um, has two has a two-term or a six-year appointment limit, um, but it's it's the only. Board, <laughs> our right. only committee that we have a term limit, so it would be consistent with the others to um, eliminate that. So, staff recommends amend the amendment to remove um, that way, allowing members who want to continue serving would be allowed to continue serving. Yeah, so. were there um, a big backload of applicants, it might be a different story with that in other committees and boards, but there's <coughs> not, so we have to. Uh, Anybody that wants to be reappointed, I think we have to allow them to do that. So a motion would be in order to adopt the amendment to the town code, chapter 31, section 31.4, to eliminate term limits for members of the Historic Landmarks Commission. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Good. All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, then we also have another appointment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have an appointment for the Historic Landmarks Commission, <clears throat> and uh, there's uh, there was two applicants. One of them is uh, Holly White, and uh, she signed up uh, interested in serving on several committees, but because of her work, she works for Marine Fisheries. She's not able to attend day daytime meetings. So uh, that being the case, the other applicant is uh, Myra Dorn, and uh, I, uh, we had a, we have a phone number for her and I tried to call her and the number wasn't any good, but I spoke to Michael and we have other means of contacting her and he's going to follow up on that. But I think in the meantime, if it's, uh, the board would agree, we can go ahead and nominate her and if there's a problem, we can just, you know, back up and try again. So I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Myra Dorn to the Historic Landmarks Commission. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. And welcome our new appointees. That's wonderful. <coughs> All right, we'll move now on to new business item number three, and this is scheduling public hearing amendments to Chapter 153 in zoning. Um, <coughs> the first item is item number A. Um, this was at our, we discussed this and, and scheduled this at our last meeting, um, but through some conflict, we need to actually reschedule it. Um, nothing has changed with what's requested. <clears throat> we just need to set the new date for the February 9th, 2015 meeting. So if you all don't have any issue with that, we just need a motion to do so. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Um, the next one is uh, a requested amendment um, from Stan White to section 153.002 definitions and section 153.076 parking to reduce the minimum square footage for large warehouse and reduce the minimum number of parking spaces for large warehouse. Um, and Greg, if you don't mind, and do these need to be taken separately or I mean, I'm we can that. take we can take B and C together 
Okay. We can take B, C, and D together. And D, too. Okay, as far as our action on those, but if we want as far as for purpose of introduction, maybe for a little bit of background. Okay. Okay. The, the first one you had before you <coughs> just, uh, deals with where the house <coughs> and um, to try to get some consistency in our, in our uh, warehouse definitions and for the parking for such. And uh, Mr. White brought forward an, an amendment. He's here tonight, and I believe... Um, Mike Strader's here as well, uh, to, to try to do just that. And, and what happened is through the years there's been changes to the warehouse definitions where we added uh, a large warehouse uh, definition um, to our um, definition um, section and all of a sudden to build an 8,000 square foot warehouse you needed eight parking spaces because it was 1 to 1,000 and to build a 5,000 square foot warehouse you need 13. So. Stan and I discussed that, and we decided that wasn't exactly right. So uh, our staff looked at the, at the ordinance and, and basically came up with um, uh, the idea that if you're having warehouse for warehouse purpose, no office, uh, you don't have, uh, you're not selling things, you're not fixing cars, you're not, uh, you know, you're not a blacksmith or a boat builder, then two warehousing, one to 1,000 was a good number, with a minimum of six spaces. Mr. White agreed to that. Uh, he thought that was fair. And uh, therefore, you have the ordinance before you. Um, the planning board um, recommended this <coughs> on the just last week uh, to come forward, and hopefully, you'll uh, see the, the wisdom and schedule of public hearing here uh, for January uh, for uh, February. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Any questions? Is this for an existing warehouse, or is this something new? It's a zoning amendment change, so anything uh, that we have really two, actually two zones that you can build warehouses in, the light industrial one or two zones, so anywhere in those zoning districts that you want to build a warehouse, this would apply. This would apply, okay. So if you have an existing, you could then modify your site plan? Yes. Accordingly, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay, since we can do this in one motion, we'll just move through at least for explanation on each item. Um, next is the permit, uh, a proposed uh, amendment to section uh, 153.355 site plan requirements to require owner consent for single family and duplex, duplex dwelling site approval um, or submittal. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, this is basically a housekeeping um, <coughs> effort if there ever was one because um, our ordinance has noticed that, that you did not have to have owner's consent to um, work on single family dwellings or build a new single family dwelling where the building code requires it and of course the commercial site plan code requires it. Uh, so it, it's just trying to make it consistent and we, we've spent an administrative policy that if, if you have a rental house you don't want somebody building on your rental house without your, your knowledge so <coughs> or, you know things happen like that and <laughs> so we, we've required owner's consent for some fun. time but um, so hopefully this will this will straighten that uh, particular uh, close that loophole in our ordinance and it's, I think you can look on the back page here it's in blue it's very simple language get to it. I want to consent of that. present consent recorded owner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, just add the uh, consent of the present recorded property owner to existing language. Any questions for Fred? Okay. And the last, <clears throat> the last one is um, proposed change for section 153.082 exceptions. And this is to allow certain fences on unimproved property. This is what um, Richard Bear was speaking at this evening. And um, this has come up a couple of times, and staff has look at, looked at this and made recommendations, um, which is, is in here and in the language, um, to allow some flexibility, because currently our ordinance does not allow um, any type of fencing on um, unimproved properties. So anything, Greg? Um, Any additional I think comments? covered it pretty well. It's, it's to allow um, for by, basically property boundary market. And, and the two fences that we've had interest in are split rail fences <coughs> and rope fences uh, that wouldn't exceed four feet in height. So it doesn't really keep anything visually out, and it certainly doesn't keep anything in. You know, um, and would allow 
like Mr. Bear said, for you to check your, your property badge fairly easily and it's an identifier, but it wouldn't encourage somebody uh, maybe start a store on that lot or uh, I think somebody at the planning board let me say create your own dog park on a vacant lot. <laughs> things in neighborhoods that somebody might just you know, be incompatible with, with the existing uh, tranquility. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, this is something I think will we'll add to our ordinance and its flexibility. Any questions on that? And the planning board did on January 6th recommend that we uh, schedule a public hearing for February 9th. Great. So would that allow like chain link fences? No, sir. Okay. Questions? Nope. Okay, a motion would be in order to schedule all three of these public hearings for February 9th at 5.30. So moved. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to Commissioner's agenda. Commissioner Midget. I uh, went to the Mid Curry Tuck Bridge meeting back in December. It was pretty interesting. There was some pretty good ideas, and there was some that were not so great. But uh, you know, there apparently could possibly be a Mid Curry Tuck Bridge in about 20 years, I think. Hopefully. You know. Also, I was in uh, Vail, Colorado, this past two weeks, and uh, they have a lot of roundabouts, which I thought was pretty interesting, and people zipping around those things. In the snow and ice with no problems and it was nice that the traffic never stopped and they have a bike lane and it says have signs that say the bikes are, are allowed to use the uh, entire lane in the roundabout so that was pretty interesting they also have these things right here <coughs> which is if you're a pedestrian and you're going to cross the street you push a button and you can only see one of them lit but it's a uh, led light and it just alternates flash and it's very bright in the daytime and it's even more bright at night and it was I thought that was just a pretty good idea maybe we should talk about putting them on the beach road at some spots you know the heavily crossed but you know it, when they hit that button I mean I, I didn't know there was lights there until someone crossed and you know it lit up and I saw it immediately and you know everyone stops and uh, the person crosses safely I thought it was a pretty good idea and uh, pretty interesting and uh, that's that's all I guess for now. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thanks for sharing, Commissioner Applin. Nothing at this time. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Rivera. Not tonight. May I approach Jim Hogan? No, I don't have anything tonight. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> we will move on to Mayor's agenda. I have a few items. Um, first, the trash attack has been scheduled for March. And I forgot to write the date down. <laughs> I was doing my notes earlier. It's um, a Saturday in March. Does anyone have their calendar in front well, of them really quickly? Down. I'm sorry. <laughs> it will not take me but a moment if you'll bear with me. The 21st, is that it? Yes. <laughs> March 21st. They don't, they don't know either. Yes. Well, it is. Yeah. So. Okay, March 21st, it has been scheduled. It's earlier this year. Last year it wasn't until May, but there were so many conflicts, I'm guessing, that the committee chose March because there wouldn't be as many other things going around, um, going on at the same time. But it was a lot of fun, and it was a great um, deed for the town, so more information to come in the future. But please mark your calendars for March 21st that morning, probably around 9 a.m. Um, next, just an update. Um, the Dare County Board approved... Um, Funding for the tur from the Tourism Board's recommendation to approve our grant application. So thank you, Meredith and staff, for submitting the application. They did um, allocate the full request, which was just around $80,000, which would be for sidewalk improvements along 158 for this next year. The next fiscal, the, not this year, but the next fiscal year. So what is that, 15, 16? 15, Yeah. So, um, next. Great work. Yeah. Let me quickly. Um. Though the date has passed, it's important to still recognize January 9th, which was last Friday, was Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. So we have Chief and Assistant Chief here. Um, it's not too late to tell them thank you and their teams for the work that they do <coughs> to keep our community safe. It's a tough job. Um, you know, uh, bless you. And Sergeant Taller here too. You know, you don't necessarily think of what they're walking out to get themselves into. And even though we might think we're a small town, some of the stories that I've heard of, you know, what they've had to run into with guns drawn and, and 
being prepared. Um, it's uh, certainly not an easy job, and you just really, truly never know what you're going to confront. So we thank you so much for the job that you do, and um, just wanted to recognize that day. Um, fourth, just as a community FYI, the Health Department office in Kittleville Hills, it's the Environmental Health Office, they are offering free radon testing kits. You may think, why do we need radon testing kits? But believe it or not, um, there they have this map that highlights levels of radon, and there have been levels of radon noted in Kittleville Hills, down in Hatteras, and also in Kitty Hawk. It hasn't grown to this huge public health concern yet, but if you have a concern, you can stop and pick up a kit um, for free. Uh, certainly, this is uh, the rest of this month is they're available. This is National Radon Awareness Month, so that's why that's out there. So, um, next, which you probably have already heard because it's highly promoted, but the county is ho hosting their public forum on um, uh, this week. I guess it's Wednesday at 6.30. Um, <clears throat> so those are all of my public service announcements. The last thing, though, is to ask you guys. Um, Rick Gray from the Community Care Clinic, he ha historically comes here when they present kind of their annual report to us. Um, he has offered to the other towns, and Nagshead and Deer County have taken him up on that, to actually have the opportunity for board members to tour the facility there, and their facility in Nagshead. If you haven't since um, they remodeled it, it's really impressive. You know, it really is a great um, community care clinic, and um, I think if you haven't seen it, it's worth seeing. I didn't know if we wanted to do that as a group. Um, Nags, had it, Nags had did it in conjunction with one of their meetings. They just met there and then, or actually they had their meeting and then they went there. Um, since we do night meetings, we maybe could meet there and then come here, but I figured if we're gonna do something like that, I guess we have to post that that's what we're doing. Um, so if the public wanted to join us, and I told Rick that if we did that, the public would be welcome to come join and walk around with us as we tour the building. But I wanted to see if that's something you're interested in doing, um, and if so, what meeting in the future you know, maybe the March, April, whatever meeting. Typically, I think they come present to us in April or May. This would replace that. I mean, you would actually be able to do kind of a live presentation okay. to show us the clinic and also report some numbers of, of how they've been taking care of folks in need in our, in our community. So is there interest in doing that? I'd be interested sure. in going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So maybe we could tour like around four or whatever day we have a 5.30 meeting. That would give us time to have an hour tour and then get back here on time for the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll just, Debbie, do you, is there a preference looking at the calendar of when that might be? Not for staff. Anymore. Not for staff. And I don't, I mean, you guys have a preference? Nope. Okay. If you don't mind, how about I look at the calendar? And yeah. since we're looking at probably April, I'll just bring some suggested dates back next month to maybe schedule it for one of the April meeting dates or early May. So one of those is a public forum. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Is that good? Okay, that's all that I have. <laughs> Thanks. Um, town manager's agenda. Hey, ma'am, not this evening. Town attorney's agenda? Nothing for you tonight. Okay. Consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Two items on the consent agenda. <clears throat> annual certification of firefighters. Um, this is for the establishment requirement that state fire departments to submit annually a roster of their active <coughs> firefighters. Um, the list must be certified by the local government in order for them to maintain um, eligibility for the pension and the line of duty <coughs> benefit. Um, and the next is a budget amendment to the Cord Government Access Channel Grant Funds from application number 11. Staff would recommend the Board of Commissioners approve the agenda, um, consent agenda is presented. Okay, thank you. So moved. A second. Okay, any discussion? Questions? All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next is the second time this evening set aside for public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Yes, Jack. Welcome so back. Patient. <clears throat> now, returning to the comprehensive transportation uh, plan, you know, actually, my comments about 158 were outside the plan, okay, although the 158 modernization is a part of the plan. About the speed limit, uh, I was well aware of the uh, 
of the progress that the town had made after that dreadful accident and fidelity to get the 45 uh, mile per hour speed limit. Um, I think perhaps though, if the municipal governments and the county government got together and agreed uh, to the suggestions I've made about 158, I do not see NCDOT resisting that. Not when you have all the elected governments in the Outer Banks asking for the same thing. I think that pressure is, will inevitably change the law. Uh, moving on to the second point, uh, I think retired military people, and I'm one of those, have a, a special feeling of kinship with police departments, and I certainly feel very grateful for the KDH Police Department. So do not take this following comment as criticism. Uh, if you do not have enforcement of laws, then you have contempt of law, and the law will be violated constantly. And I think that's the situation that we have on 158 right now. You can go out on 158 after this meeting and drive down 158 and you will be passed if you are driving at the speed limit. So all I'm saying is, uh, I know the police departments here have a lot of high priority tasks, uh, but I think it's reached the point on 158 that that should be a high, enforcement of the speed limit should be a high priority task. And I don't see anything about quotas. I don't see anything wrong with quotas. Uh, Commissioner Hogan, I got a little card from the state. It said, Mr. McCombs, you're soon going to be 50, 75. You have to retest so I can demonstrate I'm safe to operate a motor vehicle. So I'll come back and tell you if they tell, talk about in that test about uh, how I'm supposed to behave as a motorist to cyclist. Okay. That would be interesting to hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. I did not just say that. <laughs> Is there anyone else that wishes to speak this evening at this public comment? Any hands? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, any other comments? Uh, any? In response to what uh, Jack said, <clears throat> would somebody try to remember, because I'm not sure I remember correctly, when we did the speed limit thing, was Kitty Hawk not wanting to go to 45? Was that the case? Do you remember? I think that's correct. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. They didn't want to go down to 45. When we, Nag said and Kill Devil Hills wanted to, but Kitty Hawk didn't want to lower theirs. So there would be some discussion needed if we wanted to get them to join us. As I said in my report to you, uh, I think the first step is for our mayor to carry forward to the other mayor. She's a good ambassador, so yeah, she can do that. Well, we have a monthly mayor's luncheon, so I would be happy. And right. um, Dare County, Dare County Chairman attends, so I would be happy to bring this up at our at our next luncheon, kind of at least um, hear their perspective of where they're coming from too. So, okay. Anyone else have anything for this evening? Okay, then a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Well, thank everybody. you all for being with us. We're not us. slow on that, are we? <laughs>